I'm Brian Eno. It's my new record.
make the interpretive part of the mind start to work and start to listen to things and fit them together and think, what does that mean in relation to that? How does that fit? Is, that what, is, this, is this the thread I'm following or is it this one here? You know, like making a kind of detective story in a sense of the lyrics. Now, this, this was obviously partly because I, I, didn't, I wasn't interested in songs that said daft things and simple things and formulaic things. But I wasn't interested either in songs that were completely meaningless. It wasn't sufficient, as far as I was concerned, to just have a random jumble of words. It, it wanted to be somewhere in the middle. I suppose the place is probably called poetry if you're writing it down. Remember this soil. The first thing in writing lyrics was always to establish the rhythm, the rhythm that the voice would be using. Um, and uh, I've always worked on lyrics by just starting to sing. I don't really start out with a title and with an idea or anything like that. I start to sing. like a machine gun of words there and then a word that hangs for a long time and, and quite often I'll find that hanging word first so what leads up to that what can that word hang off you know um, it's a funny process but I really fit them together like a jigsaw so they idea of the artist of someone who wants to say something. Um, I don't really have anything to say. I, I want to find things out. Um, I want to make things happen actually. Can give a 
lovely sting to a song. Meaningless lyrics are actually not interesting. What's interesting is being on the border, of having rich ambiguity, of making it feel like there's something there, but you're not quite sure what it is. Outside of your own understanding. They have a rightness to them, they feel like this is what you want to be singing, but you don't know why. If you're prepared to surrender to a process and say that, okay, I'll just do it, and my understanding of it will be retrospective, I'll, I might understand it later, I might not. I decided early on that I wouldn't pretend it had all been hunky-dory, you know, because everyone's supposed to pretend, oh, we're all great friends, no, John. It wasn't like that at all, it was, there was a lot of rowing going on. I guess John and I have really quite different attitudes about how work is made. Now, it happens that the collision of these two attitudes, I think, produces really interesting music, but it's very hard going while it's there. John has a... Um, probably the shortest attention span of anyone I've ever met. He's sort of like a welder, you know? Um, it's like... And that's it. But something gets fixed, okay? Um, whereas I'm sort of like a blacksmith, sort of hammering away for days on end, and forging. So, they work together well. He, he does weld the things together as well. Um, but it's hard work, <laughs> having those two different personalities together. But it's interesting to me that work can spring from really all sorts of relationships. It doesn't have to be friendship at all. In fact, I, I haven't been that friendly with most of the people I've worked with. It's a relationship that works for work and is not that important the rest of the time. So having said all that about John, I shall now play one of the songs that he sings. state. You know, the, the effect of spending a lot of time on something is usually that you, you polish off all the little embarrassments in it. But often those embarrassments are the things that you come to value in later years. You know? Otherwise you end up with this kind of perfectly polished piece of schlock. I do it all, I think. 
it's to um, propel myself off from some shore or other which I can do in various ways by holding strong views or having a theory about this is a way you can do something. But then to, to sort of row off and be taken by the current as well and find yourself somewhere else. And, and then find to your surprise that though you can't describe this area, it intrigues you, it's fascinating. And you think, well, these elements together are very strange. Why am I interested in them? So deep in the water Sleep dark as the night Somehow it seems actions, your behavior that tell you about yourself. When you're in a crunch, when you're faced with a situation where you can lose and where you can be seen to fail, then you see what you dare stand behind. You know, I have at home, I guess, hundreds and hundreds of hours of music that I've never released. And when people come over, I play them this and I say, oh yeah, but this is not going to be quite like this. This is going to sound better. And I, I give them all the excuses. They're trying to sit there listening and I'm talking in their ear the whole time. Now, when you actually put out a record and you release a record, you do release it, you free it from all of those excuses. Suddenly, you're not there to defend it and kind of give it a good write-up. Suddenly, it sits out there in the record bin next to Emerson, Lake and Palmer. And there it is, all on its own. And that's, when you do that, that's when you know what you're prepared to stand behind. It's not all those things that exist theoretically on your shelf. Anyone could do wild things at home. It's when you put them out and you're prepared to have people say, what a bunch of crap. Because it actually does hurt quite a lot when people say that. In the long, cool evening, when the I never stopped writing songs, I just stopped releasing them. That's a different thing. I, I recorded quite a few songs in the last 10 years or so, but I didn't want to release them. What happened last year was that I worked with John on um, the record 
Words for the Dying, and we wrote a song together at the end of that record called Carmen Miranda. And this is a very beautiful little song, I think. It surprised both of us quite a lot. It didn't have a character that either of us had ever had in any of our music before. And so I thought, this looks like a new territory to me. Suddenly songwriting looked exciting again. Plus I had been singing more and more. And under any um, excuse, I would sing on anybody else's records. So I thought it was time to start again. And I like my voice a lot better now than I ever did. other things, they seemed rather close together, and it seemed to me that I had a lot of freedom suddenly to move between them. I didn't any longer feel that um, to do one thing was the dereliction of a position or to, was a condemnation of something else. So, so this, this year I felt, I felt very happy because I think that I can, I've sort of opened up the dynamic of my work and I can really work anywhere along the spectrum of things that I can do. And, and not feel that, um, uh, I don't feel ideological about it anymore. I, I feel that it all probably fits together in the end, but I don't care if it doesn't. <laughs> 